The early 30s were a time where revivals and tent revivals were being held across the nation. And in the area of Siren, God appointed a man named Ed Eliason to this area. Ed also went by the nickname of Banjo Ed because of his skill playing the banjo. Ed started holding open revival meetings at different people's houses in the areas. And it grew so much that they decided that they needed to form a church and they needed a bigger space because there were so many people who were wanting to hear from the Lord and wanting to grow closer to Him. And so the Siren Gospel Tabernacle was beginning to take shape. God moved without a doubt. Mr. Eliason would preach and continue to look for a more permanent place to meet. The people finally found a place to meet that was right off of State Road 35 and it was the Siren Dance Hall. People were praying that this dance hall would turn from a dance hall into a Pentecostal church, and that's exactly what happened. The dance hall was purchased, and with some remodeling, Siren Gospel Tabernacle became a reality. The first two evangelists were Alta Clift and Adele Newton. They were single ladies who were both gifted in music and preaching and traveled as a gospel team from Des Moines, Iowa. This gospel team ended up staying with Siren Gospel Tabernacle as they started to become established in the area. People came from near and far and the meetings would not stop. They happened every single night of the week except for Saturday and Monday nights. On September 26, 1935, they built a parsonage built by John Fawcett Construction Company. Some women even helped haul rocks and pull nails from old lumber while the men dug sewers and began to build the parsonage in 1935. Then in the winter of 1936, the building that was being used as the church, which was the old dance hall, unfortunately burned to the ground. The fire had completely destroyed everything inside the church. Then the congregation continued to meet at a vacant building in downtown Siren, and sometimes even in a tent. At this time, many different evangelists were called to come over to Siren and to share what God put on their heart. It was a time to organize, so they met with a representative from the Assemblies of God denomination. On May 29, 1937, Siren Gospel Tabernacle officially became affiliated with the Assemblies of God denomination. And right after that, they appointed Reverend Robert Spencer to become the first Assemblies of God pastor with Siren Gospel Tabernacle. He served there until 1946. Shortly after Robert Spencer came on board, they decided that they needed to build a new church in the same location as the old building that burned down. The congregation men and women both helped by donating time and money and they decided that building the new building would cost $900 with 6% interest in the years 1937 and 1938. Services were held on Wednesdays and Sundays and more and more people were being filled with the Holy Spirit and coming to know Christ as their Savior. The church was growing and needed to establish more room. So in 1938, a Sunday school was established at Siren Gospel Tabernacle. Many different pastors served in the 40s and the 50s, and in 1966 was the first time that they remodeled the basement to add more room for Sunday school space. On July 13, 1977, Siren Gospel Tabernacle officially changed its name to Siren Assembly of God. On September 30, 1979, they needed more room for all the ministry that was happening, so they began to draw up plans for adding on to the current building, which was now the current lobby and new sanctuary. This project was completed in 1980, and there were so many people that people had to sit in the foyer as there was not enough seats because this place was so full of people wanting to hear more from God. Since 1934, Siren Assembly of God has seen 15 different pastors in so much ministry throughout the course of this church. When Siren Gospel Tabernacle opened its doors for the very first time, the mission has never changed, and that's to reach people for Jesus.